What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Um, this is our part two of Wakanda Forever review. Uh, we're going to discuss the story and uh, visuals of this film. Brian, there's a lot of stories in this story. Yeah, plural, emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps which perhaps made it difficult for a lot of people to follow along and whatever. So, um, but overall, Brian, I liked the story. I liked how they explored Talokan. That was, for me, that's like, I don't know. How, how what can I compare it to? Uh, I guess that feeling of of the, that exploration when watching Indiana Jones, maybe, I don't know, and that exploration in, 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 into this city. Brian, I have to say, I was a bit disappointed in the 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 spectacle that I feel should have been with Talokan. Mm -hmm. Aquaman's was by far better i was hoping to see something like that or even better than that this was way too tame for me um regardless of that i think um black panther story um shuri story uh it was well deserving in terms of what she was going through, Brian, because I felt I felt for her. Yeah. I can already see it. This was where we were going. Now it's just a matter of how she does it. Okay, that's what but she, so so she was taking on that journey, uh, Brian, and having lost what she had lost in the beginning and then lost something else again was uh I guess she she had no choice but to be uh, uh, to try to find a solution. Um, were there any other stories, Brian, or, or anyone in particular that you're you were more fascinated with in this in this film? Wow, yeah. So I think you hit on it. This story is very complex. There's a lot of pieces to it. It the way it flowed for me is it felt like in the absence of Chad, in the absence of Chadwick Boseman, Ryan Coogler kind of came at it two ways. And he's the co-writer of this with Joe Robert Cole. I think he wanted to, he obviously didn't want to shy away from Chadwick's passing, going with the cold open, the jarring open, which basically gave T'Challa cancer. I mean, they don't yeah, say yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, they yeah, clearly yeah, are yeah. showing the equivalent of that. Yeah. And then this idea of he suddenly passed, it's just like a one line that he's passed on. I thought it was a brilliant way to just yeah. face the elephant in the room and not yeah. hide it and make everyone feel what it must have felt like for the members of this crew and cast to get the news. Remember, they didn't know any more than we did. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. Sick. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I thought he he wove T'Challa into the script over and over again. Like they mention, his, like, it's like, they don't go five minutes without mentioning his name. It's like yeah, my yeah, brother, yeah. the king, protector, the black, they are constantly reminding you of what they lost. Yeah, yeah. No way that's an accident. They were yeah. sitting there saying, we are going to keep this heartbeat going. Yes. As a, as a sort of a, a metaphor. But then it felt like on the other side, they almost turned it, it felt like to me into like a series of vignettes about other characters. It, the first third of this movie to me felt like Queen Raimonda's movie. Yeah. It, it, Angela Bassett ruled the first part, the first act of this movie to me. Yeah. And I don't think, I, I think that was intentional. I think they were like, we want her to take, take up the mantle and lead Damn. the narrative of Wakanda. Yeah. The middle part, which I actually like the best is the one where I felt Namor is the lead of the movie, the journey to Talokai. We'll get into the visuals, but 
I thought the fact that they took the time to give him a gigantic exposition. I mean, that is a man-sized <laughs> exposition they put in the middle. Yeah. They did flashbacks. They did everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they took their time to say, like, you need to care about this character's history. And then Tenok- they, they, they told it wonderfully, Brian. Exactly. He told it wonderfully himself. And he delivers, I think, a tour de force performance in this role um, to get you to buy into this is a complex character. This is a character who is loyal to Talakan above all things. And if that loyalty means he will be a hero, then he's happy to be a hero. And if that loyalty means he'll, you know, destroy and murder and kill, then he's happy to do that too. And I think they did an excellent job with that. So he kind of was the middle character. And then I think Shuri is the third act. She's the lead of the third act. It's really the resolution and her finding this balance and this peace between, you know, the path of T'Challa and the path of Killmonger, which obviously comes into play in a very meaningful way. Yeah. So I think that was the plan. I generally liked those three ideas. I didn't love everything else that came yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand why Everett Ross is in the movie, but I thought everything to do with him and, you know, and uh, DeFontaine was useless to me. I, mm -hmm. I just didn't think they added anything to this film. And I think Julie Louis-Dreyfus is wasted in a way that Nick Fury never was. And Ross just, like, he's there to kind of aid and abet, but, and maybe provide a laugh or two. But in the first movie, he was essential. In the mm -hmm. second movie, he's peripheral. Didn't love that piece of the story. I, okay, go ahead. I wanted to I wanted to add something to to what you were saying regarding um um Everett Ross and what's her what's her name Valentina um, Valentina Count, Countess Valentina De Fontaine, yeah yeah um, uh, just to let you guys know uh I you know Tracy Freddie and I talk via text and Tracy basically gave out a great summary of what he thought about this film and I thought I would use a lot of what he said as a basis for some of the some of the topics of conversation so i'll mention one here um he where he talks about ever ross and he says uh tracy says the mcu ever ross cia valentina allegra married spy couple continues the much needed world building that is an mcu requirement your thoughts on on that statement with yeah, regards I, to the so story I, I, I 100% agree with Tracy in that 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 idea of the MC requirement, and that's exactly what I didn't like about this because this is where it felt like what Marvel demands ran headfirst into what this movie needed, and that's why I question: Did Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole really, really write all this for them, mm -hmm. or did they get told, "Hey, you write have something to in. give"? X amount of screen time because we're building this Thunderbolts thing over here and we need Valentina to be a major player in that and we need exposure in this movie. Similarly, even though I know that Ryan Coogler is producing the Ironheart series, I question how much Ironheart we got in this film. I had no problem using Riri Williams as the She's basically the MacGuffin in this movie, right? The scientist who builds this device that draws out um, Namor. But to then include not only her in the movie, but this basically what was almost a full pilot, like a full pilot episode of progressing through these suits to then unveil a pretty fully formed Ironheart in suit character for the final act just felt unnecessary to me. It felt like, we get it. You need, to you need to promote your show. But I think you'd have been fine with just teasing her personality because I thought Dominique Thorne was pretty good. I thought she did a nice job of saying, look, I am not RDJ. That, yeah, that yeah, really yeah, is yeah. the number one thing she had to do. It basically saying, I need to establish an individuality to this character for the casual yeah. fan who doesn't know that I really exist in the comics. Yeah, and I thought she did that. I just didn't need her flying around in the suit in the third act. Neither did I. She would have been well suited. 
like if listen if you want to cut down on time use um again what's her name that was uh valentina yeah use her as a post credit like you've been doing yeah. if you want to further sure. along that 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 storyline with Riri Williams have her have have her and sure we have those com those those technical conversations those smart conversations and having Riri Williams help her you know because it was Shuri at the end that 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 found um a way to to create the synthetic herb yeah bingo <laughs> you know you have, you have this genius here but like she didn't really contribute nothing moment to solving namor she was she was just a smart yeah yeah but so here's my but here's my so what i can't tell in that and i, I want to save some of the discussion of, of dominic thorne's performance for the cast mm -hmm. discussion mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i can't tell here is how much of this did ryan coogler want in the movie versus how much of this was marvel saying because you don't have chadwick boseman we need to give more airtime to more heroes to pick up the slack. I, I can't tell. I, I honestly can't. I can't decide on this one whether it was Coogler just overreaching on on a on a on a show that he wants to help champion versus the studio saying we just don't trust that Shuri, you know plus Okoye, plus Queen Raimonda, plus, you know, um, Lupita Nyong'o is enough to carry this movie from a heroic side. There is a that, feeling of that. That's a bad, and it feels like a bad call. Because... Right, I, I agree. I totally agree, especially when you get to the third act and you, you have the moment of, Ironheart doing Ironheart things and you see the heads up display and 30 seconds later there's a Koye and there's Michaela Cole also in the heads up display as the Midnight Angels and you're like wait a minute wait a minute they're doing almost exactly the same thing why are they both in this final fight it does feel like there's some redundancy here so that aspect of story I felt bogged this down needlessly and I would gladly gladly have traded the um, Everett Ross Valentina stuff and some, not all, but some of the Ironheart stuff for more time in Talakan. That yes. I, I would have made that trade every day of the week. And I think this yes. movie gets shorter by 15 minutes and is better. Yes. Yes. I absolutely 100% agree with you. Um, what do you have to, to say with regards to, um, well, let me, let me see if there was anything else that um in terms of story so tracy says nemo surrender at the end was a well-conceived manipulation from the king to ensure better security for talacon atlantis so i think well, well i want to save the tenor comments for the for the cast thing for the okay thing. but i will say that i think what he does is very true to the spirit of Namor that I understand from the comics, which is like I said, his North Star and his Bible is well, it's Atlantis in the comics, but it's 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 anything and everything for Talo Khan. That mm -hmm. every that's the thing is every decision he makes is for that civilization and that people. And I think both the performance and the compromise at the end are consistent with that, which is why yeah. I think it's a satisfactory ending because you know, you know that he's calling in that favor. Oh, hells yeah. <laughs> you know that that's coming back on Wakanda <laughs> at some point in the future and you can't Absolutely. wait to see it. So yeah. I actually feel like this was one of those resolutions of we got a somewhat I guess you could argue cliche moment of these sides coming together and you see the Black Panther and you see the Submariner and they're side by side. But the way it's achieved, I think, is actually very consistent with the spirit of these cultures in the comics. And I think mm -hmm. it sets up I think it sets up this, you know, this very intriguing dance for the future between these two worlds where sometimes they are going to be on the same side and sometimes they're not. And I think mm -hmm. that's the way that's the way you want it that's the way 
I think Ryan Coogler wants it. And I think that's the best case for Marvel because this character is not neither hero nor true supervillain. It, he, yeah. ha, he has to live somewhere in the middle. And we are going to see a lot. I can't wait to see him trying to kick it to Sue Storm. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be like, Reed is going to be like, yo, how do I compete with this dude? <laughs> so that's going to be, listen, the future of the MCU so far to me looks good with what we've seen thus far in this movie. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that the, I also think that they, the, cha the, the choices they made in terms of how to change this character and use kind of the, 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 Central American civilizations as a inspiration for their version of it. I think we're by and large pretty successful. I think that mm. that translation worked pretty well. Um, and I think they also succeeded. I don't think there's anyone that will watch this movie and have any seconds confusion with Jason Momoa's Aquaman, which I think Coogler oh. admitted. And Coogler said that was a goal. He said very publicly that like they did that Aquaman is a character that resonated with audiences around the world. And it was our job to find a version of the character that was both entertaining, but very distinct. And I think they succeeded massively in that regard. These are two oh, different yeah. characters and, and people can enjoy them as such. So uh, I think we spoke a little bit of the, about the direction of the film in, the, in our previous uh, discussion. So you want to talk about the visuals? Yeah, you know, this is one where I was probably on balance a wee bit disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, again, there are high moments, but Ryan Coogler has authored some of the coolest looking things that I've seen in sort of a big budget film. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that this movie had anything that's going to go on his Hall of Fame plaque someday, if, that, if I'm being honest. I My favorite sequences were probably the approach to Talokan, the kind of like the underwater swim. And we'll get into the, he makes a choice there. I agree with you. It's not my favorite, but I loved the sequence, the music, the slow play of it, just the wonder that Shuri was. Yes. I enjoyed that a lot. And I love the flooding of Wakanda. I thought that was, of the set pieces, I which was true to the comics that mm -hmm. uh, the, the Atlantis attacks and floods Wakanda at one point. I thought that was the most dramatic, um, culminating with spoiler alert, the what I thought was totally shocking death of Angela Bassett. I, yeah. I, I couldn't believe he had the, I couldn't believe he put that in there. We're like, we're already grieving Chadwick Boseman. I was literally being like, you cannot be Damn. serious. You're gonna take Angela Bassett from us too. Um, but anyway, that that sequence I thought was the best action set piece. But I didn't think he was quite as innovative in the action as he sometimes has been. I actually thought, you know, in a weird way, slow-mo is becoming a little bit of an issue in these movies. There was, we criticized Black Adam for an over excessive use of slow-mo. He kind of went to that well a lot in this movie too. And I don't know that it worked every single time. So I didn't love all, of, I, you know, I felt like the car chase was good. And I like the fight on the bridge. I actually, that was probably one of my favorite hand to hands was Okoye getting, <clears throat> getting served by that guy. Yeah, um, yeah. The first round. But that was dope. It wasn't quite as good as the Busan kind of casino slash chase in Black Panther one, if that makes sense. I, I thought that was a little bit better. See, I thought the casino part was better in that. The car chase was common, but I thought the casino part was better in that first movie than the lead up in this one. I think this one, this fight scene was more intense. Okay. I think it was more intense between Okoye because she was fighting someone she's never fought before, never seen before, never felt in terms of strength before. And you can see it in, 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 in when she was um, parrying and blocking some of these attacks. You well, my can single see favorite she... moment is when he plants the spear and he he clothes on her on the spear. I was like, oh my. I was like, I don't, I don't oh, care if that was a stunt or not. That like that's what I'm weird. saying. <laughs> Fine, but that's what I'm saying. These fights were more visceral. And I think the fight fighting I enjoyed more here than I did in Black Panther 1. Overall, I would say that's true, especially because they paid it off in the final act where they rematch. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I liked some of the final act. Like I liked some of what happened on that ship. I liked some of like the underwater attack. 
Um, the Black Panther versus Weakened Namor fight, I don't know. Like, that was... It had moments. Like, I liked the drama. Um, it, it almost felt a little short in a movie that was too long. Like... So and that was the reason why I didn't like some of the action sequences here because it felt like they 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 should not have cut away from them two fighting. This is not your regular fight like the fight the the Wakandans and the uh, the title cans. How, how do you call them? Title Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. What the title cans. Yeah. The title cans. Yeah. Um, that fight sequence was happening, and we were going back and forth. I think the fight between Shuri and Neymar was the more pivotal one. Yeah. And we needed to see a little bit more of that. Um, seeing the weakening, certainly we already saw Neymar in a weakened state. Um, perhaps on a hand to hand combat, he would have probably had the upper hand early, and then Shuri makes the comeback because. Namor is being weakened because he doesn't have that water and yeah. she's and and having her go after him trying to stop him from getting that would have been dope to see so i wish they would have focused more on that the cutaways to the other fight was sort of it wasn't that important to see we already know what was happening there unless you wanted to highlight somebody like mbaku was doing something dope but there wasn't too much of that well what they were highlighting was ironheart See, this is part of why my point is like they were making the, the number two build fighter go. in that final set piece is Ironheart. And I think that's a problem because to your point, you've got the you got two midnight angels, which was kind of thrown in there pretty quick. You've got M'Baku, who does who actually I was surprised Winston Duke didn't get to do more in this film. To be I fair. wish he, he had quite I good, wish he, but yeah, I, yes, I wish yes, he had yes. gotten more. Um, and so I agree that like it did feel like they in a movie this long they short shifted the you know what should have been almost the equivalent of like luke and darth's duel and empire strikes back you know i think we didn't get that kind of build up and culmination uh in in the final fight so yeah i i think that's where i'm kind of like high points but overall i actually this is probably not what i would consider like kugler's best um certainly set piece you know, collection, if you will, of the movies. If I compare it to like Creed or even like original Black Panther, over like overall, I think that like it's just a little, it's a little tighter. I do want to say though, if Ruth Carter does not get an Academy Award nomination for costuming, there wow. should be a freaking investigation. Because everybody's get up in this movie was great. Yes, yes. The colors, yes, yes. the details, Talakan versus Wakanda. Yeah. This was a that was Amazing, my yeah, favorite. Yeah. Like every time there was a new character and a new look, I was like, show me more, show me more. Yeah. <laughs> so that was an A plus. Certainly. Um, let me see if there was anything else from Tracy uh that stood out. Um, um, of course, showing the evil of the Spanish crown and the flashbacks helps generate <laughs> the much needed hatred in an audience. Yeah. So I, I thought it was interesting. They, they, you know, obviously, like I said, they he he used the word. Thank God we didn't get the music dropped. Yeah. Um, oh my God, I would have, I, I would have, I would have been very vocal in the theater. Uh, oh my God, would have came out. <laughs> but yeah, they spent a lot of time on that. So in theory, that is the the moment at which mutation is born in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I thought that was interesting. Um, all right, I did want to bring up the water thing. So let's talk about the water thing. Mm -hmm. My theory on this, we know that Kugler said he changed the cameras for this film. He wanted everything to feel like there was like a, like a, almost a, a glaze on, a glaze on it to feel like everyone was crying and grieving. Mm -hmm. I think because Aquaman was so bright and colorful, his approach was, what does it actually look like when you go underwater? It's not Got it. bright. It's murky. It's yes, dark. Yes, yes, yes. And I yes. think that's what he was trying to show you was like, yes, there's this marvelous world, but it's shrouded in mystery. It's shrouded in darkness. And if you dive deep, guess what? You're not going to see like bright lights and, you know, rainbow colors. You're going to see stuff you can't quite make out that looks really good. I think that was a conscious choice. 
I happen to agree with you. I don't know that he totally succeeded. Okay. I actually feel like Talokan visually, you're left with the impression that it is epic in its scale, but you don't necessarily have that like same degree of like majesty and awe of everything that's in it that maybe I would have hoped for or expected. So I was hoping, I was, I was like, Brian, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> What am I going to see at the, you know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to see something and it didn't blow me away. It was interesting, but it didn't blow me away. So all that said, I mean, everyone's just keeping a seat warm for Cameron, really. I think in a couple of weeks, you're, you're going to see underwater done the way yeah, only yeah, one yeah. director in Hollywood can do underwater in. Avatar yeah. I, I, there's nobody that's going to beat that. And I, yeah, so maybe maybe it'll wind up being a blessing that they didn't go for too much here in some ways. But I do think that's what he was trying to achieve was a, it was a realistic look. And I happen to agree with you. I love the scene. I didn't necessarily love the palette or how it ultimately looked. Although I felt like overall this film looked pretty good. Like I actually thought like it, other than the flying effects, which I continue, that's my pet peeve. With all my you didn't like this. You didn't like the flying effects. I'm not with Marvel on this. I think their physics are wrong on these. I think the characters look like they're, they're, they're not enough friction and like wind resistance relative to the way like even, even like in Man of Steel, I think it looks better when like Superman's flying. And like I hear, I just feel like he's, he's, he's flipping and jumping and hop. It's just too easy. I, I, th I think he doesn't fly like everybody else. I know. He, yeah, the wing sandals, it's different, but I, yeah. I, I think like they looked fine for me. Yeah. I think I, I I think they looked like what Submariner would be doing in the air. I think that that the beginning shot that you can barely see him and you see this thing just twirling this helicopter that was dope to me. That was dope because you know how the Submariner is strong, right? You know, so that definitely showed it. Oh, oh wait, wait, before oh. you leave that point. I have to call it. So M'Baku, basically, th this thing that Marvel is doing now, where they, they find a way to let you know everyone's relative powers. They, they are doing this, right? So I got a kick out of M'Baku basically saying that Namor has, you know, basically compares him to like, well, he's as strong as the Hulk. And I mm -hmm. felt like interjecting, which Hulk are you talking about? <laughs> you mean the one that we want to see? Or the one that we have. Because the one that we have, I ain't scared of any character that comes in like that guy anymore. No, no. I was like, pick somebody else. Pick Captain Marvel. Pick Thor. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. This yeah, Hulk, yeah. I ain't afraid of that Hulk. Nobody's afraid. He's like Ralph Macchio in The Karate Kid. <laughs> There's no way he can beat you. <laughs> You're going to fight him every day until you get a W. So that being said, I totally agree. You know, I, I read some debates as to the people being like, is, is Namor this strong in the comics? And I'm like, I kind of don't care. I kind of like that he was, look, I mean, if you're going to make him be, he's been around for hundreds of, he's been around for centuries and nobody else in his cult, his civilization has. I had no problem having him have like Superman level strength if he's fully charged. I thought that was actually cool and something I filed away for like how they want to use him in future projects, whether he's good or whether he's evil. In a weird way, I almost felt like he was achieving something we always did want for the Hulk, which is he's so powerful that it's like, if you're turning to him for help, you are half scared and half hopeful as to what you're going to get. And I, I, yeah, so I actually yeah, kind of like yeah. the fact that they made him so unstoppable when he was fully powered up. Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think of, uh, his, in terms, comparing Namor in terms of his, uh, persona from the comics to this is, was it accurate for you? Um, well, they shied away from one obvious thing, which is the whole talking to animals, um, that. You, you, with the use of the whales and the creatures, you're sort of, it's just implied that they do. They have some sort of control. But the yes. comics made a much clearer parallel to Aquaman in terms of this character's ability and how he uses that 
And this story really did it went out of its way to avoid that, which I think is fine. I have no problem with it. But if you're asking me like comics translation, that's probably one of the bigger things that was missing. But mm -hmm. no, I I liked the characterization. I mean, I, like I said, they 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 understood that the essence of this character is he has to live in the gray and he has to be a diehard devotee to Talokan. Like that's yeah. You know, and like, and I think this movie did try to, at its most ambitious, I think it was reaching for this idea of you have, because you, if you look at how Wakanda is treated, incidentally, by the United States and France, in the, not coincidentally, I don't think, in the opening scene, there is definitely this attempt to drive home this point of you have this you know two great civilizations of color and kind of the consequences of division versus unification between the mm -hmm. two of them in a mm -hmm. world that is surrounded by to quote their own words colonizers yeah. who are looking to steal from them and take from them at every available opportunity. Yeah. At, at its boldest, I think this movie is trying to deliver that kind of message. And so- Of course, actually, it, it, yeah. and, it ends, and it ends that way in that, because Namor basically saying, um, the Wakandans, they're not gonna just leave the Wakandans alone. Right, they're gonna come after them. They cannot help themselves. They can't help them. That's what he's saying. They can't help them. Yeah. Yeah. So he it, Wakanda's gonna come to us and then we're gonna go take over the surface world. And 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 Tracy mentioned that in in his uh conclusion in terms of um the way Namor sort of just said, okay, he, the way he thought strategized the whole thing. Also realizing, like, yo, I can be beat. Imagine living all these centuries and nobody's been able to touch this dude. He's probably never felt this sort of adverse um, adversity before in terms of being at all vulnerable in this position before where he has a chance of being killed, right? Because if he gets killed, perhaps there's no chance for Talo Khan if, if they get uh, discovered, right? So he has to stay alive. So he, he realizes um, um, that, okay, I'll take it and... These people are going to come from Wakanda. Wakanda's going to come to us, and then we're both going to go at the surface world, and that'll be done. So I like the, the ending of that. I think it's a really cool evolution of some of what Killmonger represented in the first film. Yeah. Right. So the first film kind of has that, that bifurcation between sort of nobility and sort of the honorable outreach that T'Challa ultimately goes for versus mm -hmm. Killmonger's more militant sort of use of power. Take action, yes. Right the wrongs of the past. And as he said, we're gonna start over with us on top. I think Namor kind of steps between that and kind of says, well, conceptually, I agree with what Killmonger's saying, mm -hmm. but I'm wise enough and experienced enough to understand that sometimes you need to lose battles to win wars you can't just beat down every door in front of you because if you do, it will actually draw attention and exposure Oops. back on Talo Khan in a way I don't want. So he actually does it subtle, more subtly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he's just as brutal and he's much stronger. But as you say, at the end, it's, it's like an alliance that's a trap, right? Because he's kind of like, yeah, I yielded to you but I actually hold the upper hand for yeah. what I know is coming. Yeah. That's what he's like, for when the next time when they come to me, this ain't gonna be the two of us side by side. You're gonna fall in behind what my crusade. Yeah. And that's, and that, so I think that's a very advanced, you know, form of weaponry versus like Killmonger's more blunt object approach in the first film. And so I- Exactly. And, I and, like, and, and, and Namor has nothing but time. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm uh, listen. He says something to me. He says something in that film that resonated with me. He said, "My people outnumber the grass on your your yeah. your, your field." Something like that. Yeah. So that's a lot of people. 
Yeah. So I was hoping to see that, but hopefully we see that in this next, in this war that they perhaps they are setting up. But now, and I think the, the irony was, which, which one of the things I think we heard in the rumor mill, which proved true and we got absolutely right, which is Michael B. Jordan's cameo in this movie and why it was there. It is exactly what we projected, which is that yeah, yeah. for Shuri to defeat Namor, a character like that, would require tactics that only Killmonger would actually understand. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. I actually thought it made a ton of sense that they had that scene in there and that they turned the Black Panther into kind of its own anti-hero. And you know, Mbaku and everyone on down are like, yeah, we'll follow you, but this is not the spirit of what we've come to be about. Um, so I actually like I liked that. I mean, that to me was you know, it's almost the equivalent of like in Star Wars, you need to tap into the dark side to beat the dark side, right? And yeah. I think that's um I think that was cool. I think they, it's cool they did it. I think it, they gave Shuri a more interesting side to her persona than she had. And so now I'm almost curious to see, well, where does she go from there? The movie left it as, okay, she had this cathartic farewell finally. Yeah. But I count me as not 100% convinced that she necessarily embodies her brother. I think it's left to be like, yeah, she's his she's his sister, but she's also related to Killmonger, and she might actually, in some moments, skew closer to that than yeah, it's all no. yeah. I mean, because yeah, she's lost enough losses makes you sort of like lose that, I guess that um, empathy. I guess yeah, it does feel like this movie wanted to go so the, uh, maybe we'll save it for the future as well but it did feel like this movie wanted to go in the direction of doom and didn't um i think that opening sequence that opening action sequence the rumor was the lake bell character was in service of victor von doom and that that would be connected for you in the one of i guess the second post credit scene that we did not get yeah. And the fact when I saw her on screen and I saw the role, I was like, and then I saw that effectively you're supposed to think that she died within two minutes. I was like, something happened here. Something changed. Mm -hmm. And it almost made it feel like that scene, which was still important, felt like less impactful. It, it just, it feels like- I know, right? This, it feels like there's a piece missing. And it leads me to believe that Doom was in this movie mm -hmm. originally, and maybe they left it out so that it wouldn't distract from the emotion of this film but although it would have been a a, 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 a huge talking point it still would have served the purpose of the mcu which is at the end of the day the most important thing the brand yeah um and the future of the mcu to get people excited and i think that would have done that i think the mid credit scene definitely did that Yep. Um, for me, in terms of the possibilities, and certainly because of how far uh, off um, or not or not far enough they're on for the Fantastic Four stuff, you know what I'm saying? They're still developing that, and certainly Black Panther is a part of their future. Um, I did want to highlight one other scene because I mentioned it about the Chadwick absence, and I think. I'm convinced Coogler deliberately wants you to feel it at certain scenes in the movie. And I did want to at least point out the one where I felt it most acutely, which is when they flood Wakanda and Namor approaches the th throne room and he throws the bomb that ultimately kills Queen Ramonda. Those are dope bombs, by the way. Yeah, they look good. They look good tech. They got good tech. In <laughs> um, um, there is a scene where you see Namor outside floating and inside is mm -hmm. every key protagonist. It's Angela Bassett, albeit incapacitated. It's Riri Williams. Shuri's in there. Lupita Nyong'o's in there. I think Okoye's in there. And I am convinced that is a scene that is designed to show you, yes, Chadwick Boseman would be standing right here and it would be more of like a one-on-one -on -one type of scene. Mm -hmm. But we want to show you this is our family. And it's like, yeah. this is the collective we have. 
Mm -hmm. This is the new threat slash lead character that we've introduced. And we want you to feel both that's the group, but also feel that imbalance of yeah. not having T'Challa in the room in that scene. I, it's just something I felt both times watching the film and I'm convinced it was not like, hey, we're doing the best we can. I'm convinced it was, no, I want you to understand what we lost yeah. in, in that scene. There was some talk, Brian, of people not liking how um, people not liking Chadwick's send off in this film. Brian, I, to me, the funeral? Um, no, the I, I guess they were comparing it to Paul Walker's uh, appearance in his film. The oh, send off, the little montage at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, listen, the only person that could interpret how he would want to be, how he would want to send this off or send Chadwick off in this film would be Ryan Coogler. That's it. He knew this guy, you know, this was, this is, this was his boy. And I think he sort of. Every time we see Chadwick, is there's no we don't hear Chadwick's voice. Nope. And I think it's representative of his silence, uh, uh, Chadwick's silence in in, in 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 speaking volumes by doing so. Um, I didn't mind. I liked it actually. I thought, I thought. I think people were looking for him in the in the astral plane, just a figure of him in the astral plane. Who knows? Just chilling as a Black Panther. I don't know. Maybe. I don't, yeah, but so I guess my issue with that though is the point of the sh of Shuri's journey is that she doesn't see him because she's not in a state to see him, and so I yeah. think that's I think what makes the final scene resonate is that this it's it's meta in the sense that this character they're showing you inside the mind of Shuri recalling these yeah. scenes that she shared with her brother on screen but you know mm -hmm. that Letitia Wright is like that's accurate how many times did they think about those scenes that they were in together I thought it was tastefully done I thought yeah, it, was, yeah. it actually made sense I noticed that in that montage there's very little of the Black Panther he's generally shown out of costume or in the costume with the helmet off they don't show yeah. like the panther the cgi panther leaping around because they don't want like for the memory that's not the memory they want you to be left with they want the artist and the actor to yeah. remember so yeah. i liked it actually i'm i'm, I'm pro yeah I, I i was fine with it i was fine with it um anything else brian before we move on to the lead actors um or the protagonist black panther and submariner no i would just say marvel man like i understand you i understand what the mcu needs to do but you guys have to figure out with your editors how to get these down to like 215 210 <sighs> and, and let and, and and in this case i would say i i would have gotten more out of Kluger's way but but yeah, that's my only thing for them going forward. But but we do do we know for a fact that Ryan Coogler would have given us a shorter film? We don't. I'm just I'm just theorizing based upon. I'm interested in hearing that conversation if they ever ask him that. That would be an interesting uh, answer. I would like to listen to from him. Um, but yeah, that's our show. We'll.